In the spring of 1943, the tide of war had turned against the Nazis. In North Africa, General Erwin Rommel's Africa Corps were trapped and defeat was inevitable. German Navy Commander Admiral Karl Donitz sent the dreaded U-boats to attack the Allied convoys in the Mediterranean. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill ordered several subhunter squadrons flying obsolete Hudson bombers to the Mediterranean to protect the convoys and sink the U-boats. One of the brave young pilots Churchill sent into harm's way was Daryl Doc Seaman, and his first flight was almost his last. Daryl Kenneth Seaman was born April 28, 1922, in Rolo, Saskatchewan, population 500. The second of Byron and Letha May Seaman's four children, his sister Diane was the oldest, and his younger brothers were Don and BJ. Hard-working, self-reliant, industrious, community-minded, and compassionate, the Seaman children learned these values from their parents, and these beliefs would guide their lives. Doc was a star student and gifted athlete. He briefly played hockey for the Notre Dame Hounds and their legendary coach, Athel Murray. He earned his nickname Doc for the leather case he carried to the ball diamond with his cleats and glove that resembled a doctor's kit bag. The name stuck his entire life. Children grew up quickly in Saskatchewan during the Depression of the 1930s. By age 17, Doc was a seasoned heavy equipment operator, driving tractors for his father's construction company. This experience taught him thrift, toil, and tenacity, important characteristics for a young man about to face the greatest challenge of his life. In 1939, Doc enrolled at the University of Saskatchewan in engineering, but the war put his plans on hold. In early 1941, Doc and several friends went to enlist in the Canadian Army's South Saskatchewan Regiment. A sharp-eyed recruiting officer noticed Doc had excellent marks in science and math and convinced him to join the Royal Canadian Air Force instead. By 1942, he was in England training as a pilot on a two-engine Oxford. He met many young ladies, and one presented him with a lucky silk scarf. He would need the luck as it turned out. Doc received an above-average pilot rating, which is not surprising, as Doc excelled at everything he did. On August 19, 1942, he was flying a Hudson bomber on a training exercise when he heard about the slaughter of 5,000 Canadians, including the South Saskatchewan Regiment, on the rocky beaches of Dieppe. Several of his friends were among the fallen. Doc soberly recalled years later that he could have been a casualty too. It would not be long before Doc faced the enemy flying a Hudson bomber, which had a four-man crew. The men were gathered in a hangar and self-selected their crewmates. A young Canadian navigator, Tom McGlade, approached Doc to crew up with him. Not only was McGlade an excellent navigator, he became Doc's best friend. They would be inseparable from that time on. Two British air gunners, Thorne and Fletcher, joined the Canadians to complete the crew. On February 20th, 1943, Seaman was at the controls of one of the 24 Hudson bombers sent from England to Gibraltar. The Hudson was slow and lightly armed, but was reliable and could stay airborne for hours, making it ideal for sub-hunting and reconnaissance. Off the coast of France, Doc spotted three agile and heavily armed German ME-109 fighters, but luckily they did not see Doc's plane. Buffeted by bad weather and short on fuel, they barely reached Gibraltar, and despite three attempts, aborted the landing due to the crosswinds. McGlade set a course for Casablanca. Only four of the 24 Hudsons arrived safely. Doc landed on fumes. Seaman was posted to Algeria and was soon living in a tent in the scorching desert sun. Conditions were miserable. Doc and his crew were assigned to fly long, solitary patrols, escorting convoys, hunting U-boats, or searching for downed pilots and crews. It was lonely, tedious, and dangerous work. The Hudson was no match for German fighter planes. Vigilance was their best defense. March 29, 1943, Doc was sent to attack a damaged U-boat off the coast of Italy. He dove to attack, but the U-boat slipped away. He pulled out of the dive and leveled off at 2,000 feet. Suddenly, an ME-210 came at him with guns ablazing. A 20-millimeter cannon shell narrowly missed Doc. McGlade screamed, Fletcher's been hit! but he was killed instantly. Then Doc was hit, but undaunted, he gunned the engines, climbed into the clouds, and banked hard right. The fighter was gone. Luckily, the Hudson had sustained only minor damage, but inside the cockpit, it was a grisly scene. Doc had two machine gun bullets in his left calf and thigh. McGlade and Thorne applied first aid and then tied Seaman's left foot to the rudder pedal. Doc stoically recalled that while painful, he could manage as long as he didn't lose too much blood. In any case, they had no other recourse. He was the only pilot on board. 
Two painful hours later, and having lost the feeling in his left leg, Doc somehow managed to safely land the Hudson. Fortunately, the wounds did no permanent damage. Doc was more determined than ever to do his duty, and five weeks later, he and McGlade were back flying ops. Doc and Tom flew 82 combat ops together and had more difficult days ahead, but nothing compared with March 29th. By the spring of 1944, the U-boats and the German Air Force had been defeated and the Allies had invaded Italy. Doc spent the next few months flying passengers and cargo across the Mediterranean and eventually was stationed in Italy. On September 23, 1944, Doc and McGlade returned to England and for them the war was over. In 1945, Doc joined his brothers at the University of Saskatchewan and soon all three had graduated with degrees in engineering. In 1950, they established Seaman Engineering, and thereafter the brothers remained in business together for the rest of their working lives. Doc married Lois shortly after the war, and they had four children, Diane, Ken, Bob, and Barry. The brothers migrated to Calgary and established Bow Valley Industries in 1962. Under Doc's leadership, it became a multi-billion dollar international oil company. There was more to Doc Seaman than just business and hard work. He played golf and tennis, rode horses, and enjoyed fishing and hunting. Community-minded, he was active in the Calgary Stampede and in 1980 helped bring the Flames to Calgary. One of his proudest moments is when the Flames won the Stanley Cup in 1989. Doc was a prairie boy and had a deep respect for the land. He took pride in his company's environmental record and in 1987 bought the 16,000-acre OH Ranch, which today is an environmental protection area. Diagnosed with prostate cancer in 1992, Doc donated generously of his time, energy and money to build the Southern Alberta Urology Center, which opened in 2010, shortly after his passing. Through it all, he never forgot his time in the Air Force or his beloved air crew. Their pictures are on the mural mosaic at the military museums in Calgary. Doc contributed generously to the museum's Air Force Gallery, which opened in 2009. In 1972, Doc and Tom McGlade returned to England for the first time since the war. On the last night of their trip, Tom passed away suddenly. He was only 50 years old. Doc and Tom had made a promise during the war to look after the other's family if anything happened. Doc was a man of his word, and Tom McGlade Jr. became a valued member of the Seaman family. Doc passed away in 2009. He had dedicated his life to building a more prosperous Canada and a better world. He knew he was lucky to have survived the war, and this knowledge guided and shaped his life. He once said, I was given the chance to do something, and so many others were not. I thought, I must do something with my life. True to his word, his fallen comrades would be proud. Flying Officer Darrell Doc Seaman was truly a monumental Canadian.